On the Grasshopper and Cricket by John Keats. About John Keats. John Keats was born in 1795 and died in 1821. He was an English Romantic poet and one of the main figures in the Second Romantic Movement, with Percy Shelley and Lord Byron. John Keats died when he was 25 years old and most of his works were published four years his death. He wrote most of his poems between 1814 and 1819. Keats's works were not before recognized during his lifetime, as critics didn't receive his poems very well, but his reputation grew after he died, and became one of the main poets of the 19th century. Keats challenged poetic forms and created his own distinct literary configuration. He is known, particularly, for his odes, which he wrote in 1819. These are characterized by their great and powerful imagery. During his lifetime, he published 54 poems in three small volumes in a few magazines. John Keats' most recognized works include, Stood Tiptoe Upon a Little Hill, Sleep and Poetry. On first looking into Chapman's Homer, Endymion, Ode to a Nightingale, to Autumn, among others. John Keats was an English Romantic poet. He was one of the main figures of the second generation of Romantic poets. Although his poems were not generally well received by critics during his lifetime, his reputation grew after his death, and by the end of the 19th century, he had become one of the most beloved of all English poets. He had a significant influence on a diverse range of poets and writers. On the Grasshopper and Cricket is a 14-line poem or a sonnet in which the poet expresses his view that the nature is always inspiring a poet to compose poetry through its various aspects. For Keats, seasons may change, but nature would never cease to inspire the poet and sing its songs. During the extreme heat of the hot summer, when the birds stop singing, the earth continues to sing. The birds hide under the shade of the trees and fall silent. A voice runs from hedge to hedge, taking the lead in the extreme weather and sings delightfully. That is the voice of the grasshopper. He sings endlessly, but when tired it rests under some pleasant weed. During extreme winter, too, the birds stop singing. There is a death-like silence in which the nature seems to have gotten enveloped. Frost spreads its blanket over all elements of the nature. Despite that, a shrill sound comes from under the stones, it's the cricket who is singing. Cricket's song restores the warmth that had gotten lost. People hear the song and to many it seems as if the grasshopper was singing from the grassy hills. Poetry. The poetry of earth is never dead. When all the birds are faint with the hot sun and hide in cooling trees, a voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new mown mead. That is the grasshoppers, he takes the lead. In summer luxury, he has never done with his delights, for when tired out with fun, he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed. The poetry of earth is ceasing never. On a long winter evening when the frost has wrought a silence, from the stone there shrills. The cricket's song, in warmth increasing ever, and seems to one in drowsiness half lost. The grasshoppers among some grassy hills. John Keats. Summary. It is not a story poem. Grasshopper is a symbol of hot summer. Cricket is a symbol of very cold winter. Every poet has found great beauty in poetry in spring and fine weather. Keats is different. He finds nature beautiful in all seasons not excluding the hot summer and cold winter. Hot Summers. The earth is always singing. The birds stop singing in the hot summer. They seem to have fainted in the hot sun. They hide themselves in cooling trees. At that time a grasshopper can be seen flying from hedge to hedge and singing delightfully. He sings tirelessly. When tired, he rests beneath some weed. Cold Winters. The birds are silent in very cold winter too. Then, the earth expresses its pleasure through different beings. On a frosty winter day, there seems to be utter silence. Then suddenly the silence is broken not from the trees but from the stones. It is the song of a cricket. The song seems to be increasing in warmth every moment. The people hear it in their houses. To someone half asleep, it may seem to be a grasshopper song coming from grassy hills. Summary on the Grasshopper and Cricket is a 14-line poem or sonnet in which the poet conveys his belief that nature always inspires a poet to produce poetry in its different forms. For John Keats, seasons may change, but nature never ceases to inspire and sing its songs. When the birds stop singing in the heat of summer, the earth sings on. 
The birds take refuge in the tree's shade and go silent. In the midst of the storm, a voice runs from hedge to hedge, taking the lead and singing delightfully. The grasshopper's voice is heard here. He sings incessantly, but when he gets tired, he lies down beneath some pleasant weed. The bird can also be found during the harsh winter months. Birds also stop singing in the dead of winter. There is a deathly silence that seems to have engulfed nature. Frost spreads its blanket over all elements of the nature. Despite this, a sharp sound emanates from behind the stones, and it is the cricket singing. The warmth that had been lost is restored by the cricket's song. When people hear the melody, they believe the grasshopper is singing from the grassy hills. Summary This poem is of nature that how the poetry of the earth never ceases. It goes on through summer and winter. Grasshopper and cricket are used as symbols. This poem is written by John Keats. The poet says that the poetry of the earth never ends, when all the birds hide and protect themselves in the trees, a voice runs throughout the place, it is of the grasshopper. It comes out and enjoys the luxury of the summer, it takes rest under weeds and enjoys. The poetry never ceases in winters also. In lonely winter evenings, when frost brings the silence, the sound of the cricket song brings warmth and seems as though one is half lost in drowsiness. This is the time when grasshopper hides among some grassy hills. The birds remain silent and hide in winter. Also on a frosty day there is utter silence on all sides. Then suddenly the silence is broken by the son of a cricket. Its voice comes from a pile of stores. Thus, the music of the earth is endless. The first stanza is set in summer. Notice the first line and how it foregrounds the message of the poem, the poetry of earth is never dead. The lyrical voice begins the stanza by making this strong statement and proceeding to portray a summer scene. During a hot summer day, ah, the birds are faint with the hot sun and they hide from the sun and stop singing in order to rest. However, as the first line stated, the poetry of earth is never dead, nature continues to persist and the grasshopper takes the lead. The lyrical voice describes how the song of the grasshopper emerges, a voice will run. The grasshopper continues hopping and continues singing, the poetry of earth, he enjoys life and is always at ease and having fun. When the grasshopper is satisfied with his delights, for when tired out with fun, he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed. The second stanza of On the Grasshopper and Cricket is set in winter. The first line is similar to that of the first stanza because it mentions the main message of the poem. Nevertheless, in the second stanza, it is accentuated, as the lyrical voice says that, the poetry of earth is ceasing never. The lyrical voice portrays a winter scene, on a lone winter evening. Once again, at the beginning of the stanza, silence is mentioned, when the frost has wrought a silence, but, the silence will be interrupted by an insect song from the stove there shrills, the cricket's song. When winter arrives and all creatures shelter from the cold, loneliness and silence appear to reign. However, the cricket song emerges and emphasizes the persistent quality of nature. The cricket is forced to seek warmth indoors, but his song gets louder as he finds more and more warmth, in warmth increasing ever. The listeners of this song mistake the cricket song for the grasshopper's song and the lyrical voice says that the cricket song reminds him of the grasshopper's song, and seems to one in drowsiness half lost, the grasshoppers among some grassy hills. This final couplet refers to the cycle of seasons and how, despite being different, winter and summer are part of the same thing. The cricket song is linked to the grasshopper's song, as they are both parts of nature's persistent and loving force. This final message unifies the contrast that the lyrical voice has made throughout the poem. The contrast is both formal, as the seasons are described in different types of stanzas, and metaphorical, as different insects represent and characterize different seasons. However, the beginning of each stanza and the end of the poem, unify these different expressions of nature and accentuate the persistence of nature as a unified whole.